Life a Day with Jay. I'm Jay. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you this evening? Wonderful that you're here. How are things going? I didn't read today yet. I will. I will. Um, I picked up. <laughs> I, I, I buy too many books. I know that. But hey, you know what? When you read books, you buy a lot of books. Uh, the next book that I'm planning on reading is Scott Ian's book, I Am the Man. Scott Ian, if you have been following along at all, you know that I'm into metal. Anthrax. Uh, been an Anthrax fan since their first album dropped, much like Metallica, their second album, but Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, that was when I discovered heavy metal was back in the early 80s, and that was all I listened to through the 80s into the 90s. In the 90s, I started listening to some grunge, but it was still metal. It was metal into the 2000s is when I started to reach out and rediscover some of the older music through the 60s, 70s, and 80s that I had enjoyed, but didn't really collect and listen to on a regular basis. And I started going back and discovering bands that I had completely missed for some reason. Um, so I, I went, just started rediscovering a lot of this music. So for me, it's really fun to find these books by heavy metal artists. Again, autobiographies. I'm not interested. Uh, some autobiographies, like the one that I just got done with Didi Ramon, was written with a co-author because if it hadn't have been, it would have been most likely an incoherent mess. Same with Johnny Ramone's autobiography. Probably would have been an incoherent mess. Uh, Scott Ian's looks like it was written by him. Uh, Duff McKagan's was written solo. Uh, obviously, they through traditional publishing, so they had editors clean stuff up and whatnot. It's just fun to go through and read some of these books and, and go through their experiences. Uh, Dave Mustaine, I believe he also had a co-author with his but for the most part, they're autobiographies. It's not a biography, normally written uh, either without the person's knowledge or just written about these people. I don't know exactly how that works, but I prefer an autobiography to hear someone write in their voice. I, I love discovering all of these autobiographies to get the flavor of how they viewed an event. With Dee Dee and Johnny Ramone, it was interesting to see how many events synced up and how many events weren't really synced up. Um, again, just fascinating the different takes on an event that the two of them would have. Scott Ian, Anthrax, I haven't read the prologue yet. Uh, I'm excited to jump into that one. Again, I've been a fan of music for as long as I can remember. And for some reason, songs just sink into my head. I can hear an opening drum riff or an opening bass line and I'll know the song. I'll know the song, I'll know the artist. Sometimes I'll even know when the song was written around what time it came out. If it's a song I'm reeling into, just, oh yeah, that was on this album, that side, you know, third song side too. I don't know why. I don't know why that stuff sticks in my head. And I'm talking a wide range of music, and it might even be songs that I'm really not that into that I'll be able to, oh yeah, that's a Taylor Swift song, I know that particular song, or that's Demi Lovato, and that's because my favorite daughter listens to that kind of stuff on occasion. The songs stick in my head ever since I was a little kid. And I, I believe I blame Schoolhouse Rock. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. So many of those songs, if I turn one on, I can sing along with it. Uh, hey Little Twelve Toes. Uh, so many songs from that series that I could, they just, they stick. Theme songs for TV shows, like the Rocking and Bullwinkle show, it was just music, but I know the, the you know, if I hear it, oh, Yep, I, I know that's the theme song for Rocky and Bullwinkle. Theme songs for TV shows. Um, you know, I, if I hear that, what's happening? You know, I, I know that theme song. I, when I, as soon as I hear it, boom, I know those trumpets. I know that's what's happening. Um, good times, you know, all these old 70s and 80s sitcoms that actually had songs at the beginning that were, uh, you know, a minute and a half, two minutes long. 
I've been going through watching Big Bang Theory, and the Big, the Big Bang Theory intro song is about 15 seconds long. Uh, the missus and I were watching Man with a Plan. It's literally like two beats and a guitar strum. Broom, done. We're into the show. Intros to TV shows have seemed to have faded away, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about my brain and music. And I think that's what was so much fun the other day when I met with Jack Mangan and was on his show. And talking about music and talking about albums and songs and how certain bands have the same song title but a completely different song. It was a blast talking about that stuff. Because that stuff, for whatever reason, sticks in my brain. Again, I have no idea why. When I was younger, if we learned a song in school, I could hear it once and I would know that song. I would be able to hum it, sing it, whatnot. I, I was good to go. But you give me a spelling test, I don't know how to spell these words. I have no idea how to spell them. And that might have been something that when I was younger would probably would have been a good mnemonic device is to learn how to sing the spelling of these words, how to sing the order of the presidents. If I had learned it as a song, it probably would have stuck. Probably wouldn't have had a problem at all remembering them. Same with learning math and, you know, simple addition. To this day, I still struggle with simple math problems. But when it comes to advanced math problems, you know, long division, whatnot, done. I, I can nail it. But when it comes to, you know, what's what's 10 divided by 2 it'll take me to go to 5 yeah got it I don't know why I really don't I don't know why music stuck so well with me when I was growing up but I do believe that because it stuck with me so much it's why I enjoy going back and reading well not even going back some of these are newer books but I enjoy finding these books and reading them I enjoyed the music, I enjoyed the artist, I enjoyed that time. So it's interesting to see, as I'm reading these books, where was I in my life when they were going through what was happening in their book? Like Scott Ian, it's going to be fun for me to read that. Obviously he's older than I am because he was in a band when I was a kid, when I was a teenager. It's going to be interesting to see what was going on in his life during the, those times, during that era. Um, and, and kind of mirror what was happening with mine. Oddly, Anthrax is one of those bands that I've always enjoyed, but I've never seen live, well, never had seen live. And one day I'll share this concert story because it's a lot of fun. I, I saw Anthrax and Slayer together. It was, what was the opening act? Testament, Testament, Behemoth, Anthrax, Lamb of God, and Slayer. That was a hell of a bill. That was an amazing show. Loved it. I would never go to that show again. Um, one of the things, when I used to go to concerts back in the day, I wasn't really into the mosh pit. I wasn't into the, hey, let's get all packed in and sweaty and whatnot. You know, I wanted to stay where I was and just watch the chaos from a distance. Uh, I don't do well in crowds. I don't I, I get anxious when I'm in a crowd. Always have, to the point where I'll start to get tunnel vision and just, I'm not enjoying myself when I'm packed in tight. Uh, I, you know, I, I need a little breathing room. Give me a little room or I, I get really anxious. And at that Slayer concert, I will share this memory one time, but it was packed in tight and I was not having a good time. Uh, I was enjoying the hell out of the music. I was, well, <laughs> I'll, again, I'll tell that story another time, but I'll, I'll see if I can find the pictures from it as well because it was fascinating. And <laughs> what, what happened when Slayer began to play? Not what I was expecting. At any rate, I'm going to keep this a little shorter this evening. Uh, I'm still not doing five minutes. I don't know if I'll ever get back to doing actual five-minute one of these. But at any rate, this has been Five a Day with Jay. I've been Jay. You've been awesome. Until next time. <laughs>